rebuilding a tangy model steam engine part 21, making the gaskets and minor adjustments to the valve timing. And the job begins by removing the valve chest. I've made quite a few videos showing how to make gaskets for miniature steam engines, so I'm not going to labour the point on this one. The first thing to do though before I even make the gaskets is to clean off these ridges of paint which would prevent the gasket from seating properly. I'm using a surgical scalpel for this job and I've been really careful not to scratch the main paint. For the steam chest itself which also has some overspray on it, I'm removing that using some 400 grit sandpaper. And in this clip I'm pressing the steam chest onto an ink pad. Where possible this is the usual way that I make gaskets. By repeating the process I get a good coating of ink which I then transfer to the gasket material like this. This gives a very clear impression of the shape that I need to cut out. And I start by cutting out the middle section. After which I punch the holes using a hole punch. The last part of the job is to cut out the gasket. If I cut it out first it would be weak. So I always leave it as part of the parent material right until the end. The next job is to pack the stuffing gland. I'm using a piece of graphited yarn for this, followed by tightening up the gland nut. And when I got the gland nut to the correct tightness, I just backed it off a fraction so that the valve spindle moves freely. After which, I bolted the whole assembly to the engine. I'm going to make a new pin for the crosshead. That's why I got this small piece of steel hexagon. I just don't like the look of a screw at this point. The procedure is simple, this one fits perfectly, so I'm just going to copy it. I'm taking a micrometer measurement of the diameter. This is a very simple plain turning job with a bit of threading, so I won't labour the point. I'll run the lathe sequences at a much higher speed. The finished shaft of the pin needs to be 5 8 of an inch long, so I'm just checking this with a ruler. It's a good idea to stop the lathe before taking measurements. As I make this pin, you will notice that each time I get to the end of it, I just turn the tool in a little bit to relieve it. Because the lathe tool is rounded, it gets rid of the shoulder that is normally left after you've turned a piece of metal. The roundness of the end of the lathe tool is very, very small, but then some of the parts you make in model engineering jobs are very, very small. By frequently stopping the job and testing it with the micrometer, I end up at the correct dimension. Here is the sequence in its entirety and you'll see just how many times I check it. I'm checking the work slightly more frequently than I would do because I'm making a video about this for beginners. And as I've previously mentioned you will also notice that every time I get to the end of a cut I press the tool in very slightly for the reason that I've previously mentioned. A final touch with a piece of wet or dry sandpaper and the part is finished. I'm further reducing the diameter at the end for the thread, and here's the threading process very much speeded up. Now it's time to form the head. I've turned the part round in the chuck, and I'm machining the head completely freehand. I don't want it to look perfectly flat, you'll see what it looks like in a moment. By doing it this way and polishing it upon the polishing spindle, it just looks a little bit better. In this clip, I'm using a flapper wheel in my small Proxon motor tool to smooth out the internal diameter for the gasket that I've made for the cylinder cover. And that's it, the job's finished. Time to run the engine and see what it sounds like. I won't talk over this bit so you can listen to the exhaust beat. By placing my finger on the flywheel and putting some pressure on it, I can feel that there's plenty of power. I don't like the sound of the engine though, it sounds very hard. So I altered the valve timing slightly, this is a little bit retarded. I like the sound that it makes as the slide valve bangs against the port face with the pressure. Yes, that's made a difference, it's running slightly freer. 
You can hear the point where the air is admitted to the cylinder by the hissing noise. But I think I can improve things by just going into obsess mode and making minute adjustments to the relative position of the eccentric. Yes, that's a good bit better, far smoother and very free running. Admission is just about on top dead centre, maybe fractionally after, but the engine seems to like it this way. But I think that just a minute adjustment of the flywheel, which of course holds the eccentric sheave, the engine will run even better. Yes, that's the position. I think that's as near perfect as I can get it. I have my finger on the flywheel, there's plenty of power, and the engine really wants to go. It was worth the effort, and the exhaust beats are very even. If you watched the previous video, you will notice that there wasn't much of an exhaust beat at one end of the cylinder, because the cylinder cover didn't have a gasket and was blowing badly. But now with the gasket in place, it's not blowing, and there's a nice exhaust beat at both ends of the stroke. That's it, the engine is completed. I hope you've enjoyed this series about the resurrection of a Bassett Loke Tangy engine. I'll leave the engine running for a while yet, here it is in slow motion. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.